Okay, well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Christchurch this morning. And it's lovely to be worshipping with you on this Easter Sunday. And the ancient greeting is, I say, Christ is, I say, Alleluia, Christ is risen, and you reply, very good. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Let's worship the Lord in song. Please stand. Jesus Christ is risen today. Angels 
Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Oh, Jesus, I sing for all that you've done for me. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen risen indeed. indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Will you please be seated? It is, oh, and and also, Happy Easter. Is that right? We've been learning that this morning. Happy Easter. Easter. Okay. Happy Easter. That's Easter egg. Now, this is Happy Easter. (laughs) Okay. Okay. So, uh, anyway, it's been lovely. And, um, uh, it is really good to be worshipping with you. Lots of um, lovely familiar faces, also some from the past lurking and some that I've not seen before. So it's really lovely to be worshipping with you this morning as we celebrate this key moment in the history of the universe. 
the moment, the moment that changes everything. And it's a great joy to be able to welcome those of you who are on the live stream as well. It's lovely uh, worshipping with you today. Now, one of the things we do is that we do share chair. This is a chair on which we sit and we share. And it's a, it's a good discipline anyway to start to think about your life, think about the things that have happened recently to you, think about things that you've been praying about, to think about whether there have been answered prayers, or just to give thanks for things that mean something to you, because the part of the essence of being a follower of Jesus is to learn how to say thank you for things. And the more you say thank you for things, the more you realize God is doing so much for you all the time. It's when we forget to say thank you that we kind of forget that God is there. And it's really important that we remember that God is there um, day by day, isn't it? Um, because there's so much that tries to make us forget. So it's a basically a thank you thing. Uh, so you've all got the opportunity. I ho I'm hoping you won't all come forward, obviously, because that would take a long time. But we have an opportunity to say thank you for something, uh, for something which you've been doing. And it may be you need a few moments to think about it. It may be that you think about something and don't want to share it. But it may be that you do. So just we're going to have a... We're going to have a, a thinking moment. Okay, and Daniel, come on down. <clears throat> I want to thank God that um, we've been praying for some good weather for today because... We're hosting 20 people for Easter, and we, wow. and we really need that garden. <laughs> and, and I just thank you. I just thank the Lord that it's some like really nice sunny weather today. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, what do we do? One, two, One, two three. three. Thank, thank you, God. God. Thank you, Daniel. <laughs> and actually, I wanted to... Um, say thank you today because I've got a, a friend who's also a vicar and his church needs to do a building project. They need to do a building project because they're, um, uh, anyway, I'll go into that, but they've been, they've got plans, it's all there, they've, they've, they've been pursuing planning permission but it hasn't come in yet and they planned a gift day, they needed to raise at this initial gift day £250,000 when the, uh, the, the planning permission didn't come in, they had the gift day, they raised £600,000. And then it, that was in the Sunday evening, Monday morning, the planning permission comes through. So he's just been really happy that everything's been going on. So um, I'm really, he, he's just brilliant with this. Uh, and it's great. And I said, yeah, that happened, that happened to us, you know, uh, all those years ago. But, you know, it's old hat for us. But for him, it was like, so uh, let's one, two, three. Thank you, God. Amen. Barbara. Okay. I don't know if you know this, but um, Jeff and I have just, oh, a couple of weeks ago, came back from a fortnight in America where um, we went because my eldest granddaughter was getting married. It was a wonderful occasion, it was a wonderful family weekend, or we were there for two weeks. And it was just great. So I'm very, very grateful. And I feel really blessed to have lived long enough to see a grandchild getting married. Yeah. And I hope there'll be some more. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I really want to thank you. And, I, and I know there, was a, there were a few things going on underneath the surface, which all yes, we which prayed all about, didn't we? Yes, and they, they all right. panned out well. It was, so that was just good. a lovely, lovely yeah. occasion. So yeah. God bless Emma and Jack as well. Emma and Jack. <laughs> thank you. One, two, One, two three. three. Thank, thank you, God. God. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> because Sarah's not here, I'm not sure about. Can you can you help me? If, can you help? Can you speak into the microphone? Hello, Simi. What are you going to tell? What are you going to say? What are they? Oh, planets. I see. Yes, I wondered what. I thought they were fish, but they're planets. So 
in the morning when he woke up, there were 15 eggs hiding, 15. and he and Esther, tiny ones, and so he and Esther, Kenny, had to go and look for them. They covered their eyes, and then they went and looked for them, and they found them. And everyone got eggs, and Kenny got those. Thank you, Gwen. Thank you, Gwen. Thank you, Gwen. Just the, the radiant excitement. Of, and, uh, presumably, he's brought one for me. Uh, anyone else going to share this Easter? This Easter. Yeah, Ra Rachel. Just come. Oh, thank you. Yes. Thank you. Are they are they Simmy's eggs or? They, uh, Kenny, a well, round of applause for Kenny. Yeah. Actually, chocolate's from the devil, so I don't eat it. Don't <laughs> <Yeah>. True. <laughs> um, oh, there's a number of things I could say thankful for. But um, I went to see the Passion Pay in Trafalgar Square on Friday. <laughs> and I, it was amazing. It was so, so good to have the place completely packed out with the final week of Jesus being displayed right in the middle of London. And I am so, so thankful that we have permission to do that kind of thing in our nation and that we can proclaim the gospel so publicly and to have, I don't even know, like at least hundreds of people there um, to, to witness it. And I really do pray that there are many people that, that heard the gospel in a new, fresh way um, and can and can to get to know Jesus in a deeper way. So, I want to say thank you, God, that we have permission and that the freedom to to display the life of Jesus in that public way. And for those many people, I think they said there were hundred actors involved, and mm. um, that have made that commitment to do that every Good Friday. So go next year; it's really, really good. And um, so one, two, three. Thank, thank you, you God. God. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you. Uh, jump. <laughs> can I can I trust you? <laughs> um, this is uh, about. Is this working? Yeah. Can you yeah. hear me? This is about um, my uh, grandson, and it's related uh, to this chair. So I've actually got two two stories. The, the first one was um, uh, he. Well, let me say he lives in London with. Uh, uh, my son and uh, comes to church here occasionally. Um, he's now got uh, uh, a baby brother, uh, and one uh, Sunday, uh, my son had been up most of the nights. So he went back to bed, so they didn't come to church. And when he got up, uh, Jacob, who's just six, said, "Dad, why didn't you get up? <laughs> I really like Grandma and Granddad's church." <laughs> So that's, that's good, yeah. telling his dad. Now, um, th this week they've gone to Spain, uh, and before they went on the plane, quite rightly, uh, they prayed. Um, and when they finished praying, uh, Jacob said, one, two, three, thank, thank you, you, Lord. <laughs> that is fantastic. His mum said, where did you get that from? <laughs> Grandma and Granddad's <laughs> church. <laughs> so, one, one two, two, three, thank, thank you, God. God. Thank you. That's brilliant. Thank you. Thank you. That's fantastic. <laughs> okay. So um, we, we're going to have a reading now, uh, which is going to be on the screen. Lassie's going to come and read it to us. But I want you to listen really carefully because we are going to have a short um, a few questions. I'm going to ask you a few questions. It's going to be a competition, girls be boys. I know we do that a lot, but, I, you know, boys are so insecure. They need to prove their... Superiority in one way or another. Uh, so, so they'll have all the easy questions. Um, Latty, come. So Latrell's going to read us um, part of the Easter Sunday story. Today's reading will be taken from Luke chapter 24, verse 1 to 12. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men st uh, in clothes that stood like lightning stood beside them. 
In their frights, the women bows their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee. The Son of Man must be delivered to the hands of sinful men, be crucified, and on the third day raised again. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the apostles. But they did not believe the women, because their words seemed like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away wondering to himself what had happened. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Letty. Thank you. Well done. Okay. So it's quite a long reading. You had to listen quite carefully. I think some of you will have definitely heard it before, but I've got some questions. So the first question to the girls is which day of the week did this take part? Did, did, this, did this take place? Which day of the week did this take place? It, according to this reading, which day of the week? Esther. No, it wouldn't. It's not the third day. Good try. That, you were thinking hard, but it was a good try. But would any of the boys like to have a go? What's uh, 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 Io? Okay. If you've been listening carefully, it was on the first day of the week. Mm. On the first day of the week. Now, what for the boys, what day of the week was that? The first day of the week. What's known as the first day of the week? Okay, at the back there. Sunday. Well done. Sunday, one point to the boys. So the first day of the week is the Sunday. And we'll come back to that. The first day of the week is the Sunday. Who, this is for the girls, who went, who went to the tomb? Who went to the tomb? <clears throat> yeah, Jack, yeah. Was it Mary, Mary and Joanna? Yes, yes, very good. Yes, way, Mary, Mary and Joanna. And some others, but they, they were all women. It was all the women. And what, what were they taking to the tomb? This is for the boys. What were they taking for the tomb, Kenny? Spices. Spices. Good. One, two, one, two, one. <laughs> what did they, the girls, what did they discover when they got to the tomb? What was the thing that was weird, that was strange? Ella. The stone had been rolled away. Thank you. Well done. Two, all. And when they looked inside, this is for the boys. <laughs> They don't even know what the question is. And it's got their hands up. So I could say anything, couldn't I, now? When they looked inside, what were they thinking about? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when they looked inside, what did they see? Uh, Daniel. So? They didn't actually at this point, no. That, that's, a, that's a good answer. But uh, no, perhaps the girls would like to have a go. It wasn't the linen cloth. What did they see? What did those women, that group of women, see? Angels. So? Angels. Yeah, they did actually. But when the, when, that's not the answer. <laughs> when, when, they, when, <laughs> when they looked in the tomb. <laughs> correct. Esther is correct. They saw nothing. Jesus wasn't there. The body wasn't there, so that's 3-2 to the girls. Eh? Then they saw two men, and how did they, how did the, so who's this for? It's this for the girls, isn't it? It's, this, it's for the girls, isn't it? Because the girls just were, because the boys got it wrong, didn't they? So this is for the girls, um, and it's 5-2 to the boys, isn't it? That's right, isn't it? <laughs> uh, uh, but they did indeed see two men, and what did they look like? What's the word that was used to describe what the men looked like? The line, this is for the girls. This is for the girls. Definitely. Ella. They look like lightning. Well done, Ella. Very good. So that's 4-2 to the girls, I think. I don't know. Um, and what did the angels, so the boys, what did these two men that looked like lightning, they were angels, what did they, can you say anything that they said? 
to to the, to the women, yeah. Kenny. Why are you looking for the living among the dead? Thank you. Why are you looking for the living among the dead? Which is the big thing. Why are you looking for the living among the dead? Then they went back, and who did they tell what they'd seen? Who did they tell? Who did the women tell? So this is for the girls, isn't it? Who did they tell? You're depending a lot on Esther here. She's, uh, <laughs> so who did they go back to tell? I suggest if you, if you don't know the answer yourself, get some cheat. Oh, that's what I would do. Just <laughs> ask someone to tell you. Sarah. The 11. the 11. Thank you. The 11. The 11. So there used to be the 12, but, but Judas wasn't with them. So uh, there were only 11 of them. They went back to... to uh, uh, and, what, um, and what did the... The women told the 11... But the 11 didn't believe them. And what, what is it? What, why didn't they believe them? So this is for the boys, isn't it? Why didn't they believe them? Because their words seem like nonsense. Their words seem like nonsense, which we will come back to as well. Um, and so then Peter, though, he's a good, good lad, and he, he ran to the tomb, and he looked inside the tomb, and what did he see? Esther. <laughs> well done, yes. <laughs> Very good. He saw strips of linen, didn't he? Which were the burial clothes that Jesus had been, had been wrapped around Jesus. So it was a surprise to see them there, but not the body. And then they went away. So that was a draw, I think, wasn't it? I can't remember. It was something like that. I have a feeling that the girls probably picked the boys at the post. But uh, it's just a bit of fun. It doesn't actually matter whether you win or not. Let's hear it for the girls. I think we also have to hear it for the girls because... One of, the in, one of the really interesting things about the accounts of the, the resurrection is that it's the women that all see Jesus first. It's, it's not, not the men. And they believe much more quickly uh, than the men. Uh, and there's, social, there's cultural reasons why that was really unusual. That was really strange. So it's, it's a great thing to see. But there were several key words, weren't there, in there, so, which I just wanted to focus on uh, for a few moments. So f firstly, what did the angels say? Kenny, can you tell me again? You told me before. Uh, why are you looking for the living among the dead? And this, this is part of the thing about Easter Sunday, about the resurrection, is that it's so, un it's so unexpected. And then they end up looking. For, what what, what um, is being implied that there's something happening which they kind of should have known about because Jesus had been telling them, but that they had nowhere, nowhere in their tiny little minds to, to put it. They didn't know how to even visualize what Jesus was talking about. So basically, they're looking in the wrong place. Why are you looking for the living among the dead? And that, that's, really, that's really important for us. Why are you looking for the living among the dead? Because if, if we're looking in the wrong place, then we're never going to find Jesus, are we? And if, if we're, we're imagining someone who's an old historical figure, or if we're imagining someone who lives somewhere else, then we're, we're never going to see him. But if we're looking for someone who's living and someone who's here, then it becomes a very different expectation looking for someone who's here. Now, what, what, it, what, what, the, what the, the rest of the disciples said to the women was the words seemed like nonsense to them, and that, that is part of the problem. Because it just doesn't make sense. So the Christian story doesn't make sense because no one comes back from the dead. And we're not just talking about someone being resuscitated from the dead who then went on to die later. We're talking about someone who was really dead, you know, uh, and dead sufficiently that we would say he was brain dead, you know, f you know, 48 hours, and therefore there was no life left. So it's a new life. What is happening is a new life, and they begin to understand that as the days go by, because his body is the same, but it's not the same. There are, it's recognizable, but it's not recognizable. There are, um, it's a new body, but the, the, the scars of the crucifixion are still there. So, so there's some continuity and some discontinuity. But it doesn't make sense to them at first. It doesn't make sense to them at first. But bit by bit, over the next 40 days, as they meet with Jesus, it begins to make sense. But it makes radical sense. It, this is something that was mind-blowing. They, they previously had had no concept. Of, they had no place. They had no pigeonhole in their minds or whatever, or their hearts where they could put it. But bit by bit, they came to understand that this is amazing. Why look for the living among the dead? 
And that's the call for us, is to keep looking for the living Lord Jesus. Not think it's gone or he's distant or he's far away, but where is the living Lord Jesus today? And part of, partly why, why I love doing this, thank you, the, the, um, the, um, the, the, the thank you, <laughs> thank you. Give me a break, I'm 63. It's, uh, uh, where am I? <laughs> it's, um, and now I've completely lost, uh, oh, why I like the share chair, thank you. Why do I like the share chair? Because we're looking for the living. That's right, thank you. We're looking for the living. We're, 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 not looking, for, we're looking in the right place. Where, where is God active? Where, where are we able to give thanks? Where are we able to give thanks? <coughs> um, his, the words seemed like nonsense. But let's also, let's be like those first women. Let's be like Peter. Because although, although it didn't make sense, although they went to look in the long pra- wrong place, Although they thought it was nonsense, they pursued it. They went on. They went on looking. And so um, uh, Peter and the women, in, in the end, but by the end of the day, it's, everything's changed again because they actually meet Jesus and he begins to explain it to them. But they, they keep on looking at it. So even when it feels like nonsense to you, even when you are looking in the long pla- wrong place, keep looking. And the, the risen Lord Jesus will come to you. Now, we're going to have our intercessions led for us, and then we're going to talk about some other stuff as well. So, our intercessions, please. Uh, Simon and Abigail. Sorry. Thank you. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, all of a sudden, yeah. And Scarford. Good morning, everyone. At the cross, Jesus showed the world love. Almighty Father, help us as followers and believers to show love in our everyday actions and words. For people, irrespective of their race, gender or age. In your mighty name, Amen. Jesus asked the high priest, what are you willing to give me if I betray Jesus to you? So many times people, nations and media have betrayed themselves, nation and people. Almighty Father, we pray for all people and nations who have been hurt or killed by betrayal from their own loved ones. May they experience your love that saves and comforts all. Amen. May also this love and comfort spread across Ukraine during these troubled times. For friend and for foe alike, may peace come soon. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. During this special time for all, may all Christians across this world feel your power and strength for those that are persecuted or pressurised for their faith and belief in you. May you strengthen them, fill them with power to renew them, to carry on in your mighty name, Jesus. Amen. As we come closer to home, right, where we ask for prayers for the country for our leaders that govern us, for the councils, companies and bosses, of any who are helping to keep this country going. May you help them, help them all to make the correct decisions needed to help sustain and fulfil us. We ask this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Lord, help us all through these difficult times of financial burdens and pressures, of strains and worries that we all may have. It could be precious for ourselves or for our loved ones and other people. Bless those who are helping to ease these pressures, such as those involved at food banks or in the Monday suppers here at Christchurch, and help the whole team. May you renew them all and bring us all peace during these cloudy times for us. 
We will ask this in your mighty name, Jesus. Amen. At this time also we will be thinking of those who may be suffering illness or isolation, might not be able to venture out and enjoy the nice weather at the moment. May they come to feel your warmth, Lord, and be renewed in, in energy and strength as well to carry on enjoying life. In your mighty name, Lord. Amen. Father, now we come closer to home. Thank you for Reverend Jeremy and all the wonderful staff and people that help to run Christ Church meters and greeters, and all the music team and the technical staff making all of this possible. May you also look, we look towards staffing any positions that might need to be filled here, such as at the moment a new communications coordinator. May you, Father, bless us with more wonderful people, with wonderful new ideas and energy to direct us in the right course of action, as you always do. Amen. Now finally, prayers for the building itself. Father, help us to repair and furnish this place of worship. Help keep it to be a centre of the community, to, become, to continue being a beacon of light for all of us around here. May this carry on for many, many more years to come. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much, Simon. Now, I'm going to read a bit more of the story. But before I talk about that, before we read the story, I just want to just highlight one thing. And if you remember, what, what, day, what day of the week was that previous reading about? What, what did they say about the, which day of the week was it? We talked about that. It was the first day, wasn't it? It was the first day. Sorry, thank you. It was the first day. Uh, and that, well, that was the Sunday. Uh, and um, that was just a normal day in, in their week. Um, but the Christians started meeting on the Sunday because it was the day of resurrection. What they also started doing fairly soon was calling it, rather than calling it the first day of the week, they started calling it the eighth day. They started calling it the eighth day because th th they, they realized that it, it wasn't just part of the cycle, it wasn't just part of the circle of life, the, the, the normal things that go on and on. It wasn't just part of the seasons. It wasn't just part of the week. Something new happened in the resurrection, which means the, the old thing had kind of disappeared. Now, obviously, we still live with the weeks and everything, and so this was just a sort of symbolic thing. But somehow entering to the eighth day, and that's where you stay, the eighth day. So wh why look for the living amongst the dead? What, you know, so li why live in the old age, the old world, when we can live in this new resurrection age, when we live in the eighth day? Now, it's com you know, obviously it's complex and you can go deep with that, but it's, it's, uh, just, I, I find that a really helpful way of just recognising that what we're living in is something new. We live in this new age. And I think that's what this next reading is about. It's about how do we take seriously that we live in something that's unprecedented? And how do we live? How do we live there uh, and, and not still live in the old age? So this is also from, uh, <coughs> uh, from, John, uh, from Luke, sorry, Luke, 30, uh, Luke 24, verse 36. While they were still talking about all this, Jesus himself, stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost doesn't have flesh and bones, as you see I have. When he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. So he was showing them the scars, the marks that he had. And while they still don't, did not believe it because of joy and amazement, he said, do you have anything to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish. And he took it and ate it in their presence. He said to them, this is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. That's the, the complete New Testament. 
Then he opened their minds so that they could understand the scriptures. And he told them, this is what is written, the Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. <clears throat> I'm going to send you what my father has promised. But stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. So there's a, there's a whole load of stuff in there, isn't there, really? But I, what I wanted to focus on was that the, this, this is the, the nonsense. It, it seemed like nonsense to them is beginning to be unpicked. And part of the nonsense is how come that God's chosen one can be crucified? You know, how does that make sense? How can he suffer and die when he's, when he's the chosen one? He's meant to be the king. You know, so that they're, beginning to, they're beginning to grapple with that. And also, how can this, this one who suffered and died be alive? How can he be alive and how can his body be so weird that they kind of, you know, is he a ghost or not? You know, how come he still eats? How come he's still got scars? You know, so there, there's something up there. They're beginning to translate that nonsense into actually there's something new happening. And I, I think for today, I want to talk about the, the first thing that Jesus says to them, which is peace be with you. Because I think this is uh, an element that Jesus is bringing to us. Uh, as part of the new thing that's happening. This isn't just a greeting. He's not just saying, hello, I'm here. He's saying, no, actually, from now on in, peace be with you. What has happened brings you peace. And, if, you know, and it's not just emotional peace. It's not just, um, uh, you know, peace functionally. You know, you can go about your business and not, not have to worry about stuff. This is the deepest peace of all. That there is peace. My peace I give you, and you've got to live. This is the new thing. We live at peace with God. We're no longer at enmity with God. We live in peace with God. We live at peace with God. And therefore, we also live at peace with each other because something new is happening. And so the peace of Christ, which passes all understanding that we talk about, that we, we ask that it will keep our bodies and minds in the knowledge and love of God, the peace of God that passes all understanding is this peace of the new age. It's the peace of the eighth day. And therefore, to break that peace is, is a nonsense because the, the, the peace of the eighth day, it, that's what the eighth day is about. It's about peace. And therefore, when we break peace, it's actually, we're still living in the old age, as it were. Which is why the, um, the, um, uh, the peace that we share, and we're going to share the peace in a minute, which is why... We share the peace every Sunday before we go on to, into communion. It's, Christians have done it for a long time. It's a, it's a good thing to do. It's a nice thing to do. But we also do it because it's essential. Because it, it's the doorway into this new, you know, we're entering this new age. We're entering the eighth day, which is the day of peace, uh, which never ends. You know, it's, it's the eternal day. It's the Sabbath rest that uh, gets talked about elsewhere. We enter the Sabbath rest and the Sabbath goes on and on and on. So, so uh, grappling with sharing the peace with each other is, is not just making sure that we're, we're at peace with each other personally, you know, you know, I forgive you or, you know, I'm sorry about that or, or whatever. It's not just those things. Uh, it's also, th th this is so important. This is the new age that we're entering into together. We live somewhere else. Why look for the living among the dead? They said about Jesus. You know, why look for the living among the dead? And this is where the living are. Okay. Thank you. Now, I want my little helper who's... Ayo, oh, yeah. come here. Please. Please. <clears throat> All right. So when we share... Ayo so and I are just going to demonstrate what it's like to share the peace. Because right? in a minute, I'm going to say, the peace be with you, and you're going to say, and also with you. And I'm going to say, let us share a sign of peace. And th there is no right way of sharing the peace, right? Because you can just go like this, say hi. 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 Or you can do this, can't you? Peace be with you. Peace be with you. And you, you don't have to say anything, but you can say peace be with you, right? Or you can do this, can't you? Oh, I just can't stand it. Or you can do this. Yeah. If you're a man, you do this. Oh. And you, or you can do this, can't you? Which you can do this, and you can do that, and you can do that, and you can play. One, two, okay. three, four, I'm a clarifying wall. I promised I'd let yeah. you in. One, two, three, four, I'm a clarifying wall. Okay, well done, man. And then you can kiss. 
Or you can do a high five. Or a low five. Or a baby five. <laughs> okay, but you don't have to do anything. You just have to greet each other. All right, thank you. Thank you, Io. You may go. A round of applause for Io. Thank you. So will you please stand? And so the risen, the, the living, the eternal Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. And they were glad when they saw the Lord. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us share with one another a sign of peace. Welcome, <clears throat> my brother. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> baby five, baby five. Okay, so um, if you can return to a seat. We're going to move now into communion. Um, it's not the breaking of bread. This is a different thing to, to what we do when we're all together normally. So 
So um, some of the children, um, you can still come forward at the right time, but we won't be able to give you any bread. I know that's a bit confusing, but we won't be able to do that this morning. Uh, some of the younger children. Um, but um, uh, just, just bear with. Bear with. 500 years of history, <laughs> just to bear with. Um, uh, so, uh, but um, we're going to, uh, this is Jesus' is, as it were, the um, uh, communion, which uh, is based on what happened just before he was crucified, is, of course, the recapitulation of his whole story. This is Jesus saying, this, this is what brings peace. He is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And he grants us his peace. So the words will be on the screen. <clears throat> and we go through it. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ you shared our life that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him and his blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, <clears throat> make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise, lifting our voices to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. So as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Give us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. So sisters and brothers, let us draw near with faith. Let us receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for us, and his blood, which he shed for us. Let us eat and drink in remembrance that he died for us, and feed on him in our hearts by faith, with thanksgiving, living in his peace. I'm going to ask the musicians to come up. They're going to be singing for us um, as we go. Also, Yabo and Dawn. So, um, the, for, for communion, we're, we're still aware that for some people, they still feel vulnerable because of the pandemic. So, there are prepared wafers at the back um, with Dawn, if you want to go there. If not, um, we'll, we've got the shared cup at the front here. And so, um, as the stewards invite you to get up, you then make the choice. You, you can choose where you want to go. <clears throat> so we are by the body of Christ.
greatest day in history. Death is beaten, you have rescued me. Sing it up, Jesus is alive. Empty cross, the empty grave. Life eternal, you have won the day. Shout it out, Jesus is alive. He's alive. eternal you have won the day shout it out jesus is alive
So let's pray. I'm going to say a prayer, and then we'll say the prayer together on the screen. God of life, who for our redemption gave your only Son to the death of the cross, and who by his glorious resurrection has delivered us from the power of all our enemies, grant us so to die daily to sin, that we may evermore live with him in the peace and the joy of his risen life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we say together. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and <clears throat> brought us home. <clears throat> Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace, and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life, who drink his cup, bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights, give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free. And the whole earth live to praise your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And if I could just have the collection, please. <clears throat> Thank you, sir. So, Lord, we thank you for your provenance for us in this new age, the age of peace, the eighth day. We thank you that you will provide all that we need, even when we don't know precisely what we need. We thank you that you'll do it. And we thank you for these gifts in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, so it really has been lovely worshipping with you, and we're going to conclude now with our final song. So please stand. <coughs> Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future and life is worth. He lives, I can face tomorrow because he lives. All fear is gone because I know he holds the future and life is worth the living just because he Because 
again from the dead, our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, may he make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and remain with you and all those for whom you pray, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Greatest day in history Death is beaten You have rescued me Sing it out Jesus is alive. The empty cross, the empty grave. Life eternal, you have won the day. Shout it out, Jesus is alive. He's alive. Oh, happy day, happy day. Happy day, happy day, I'll never be the same. Happy day. 